Welcome to the next video in our series explaining how to build your own quadcopter drone. In this video, we will explore how you can measure the vertical velocity of your drone using the MPU 6050. As we already saw, the BMP 280 barometer mounted on the drone enabled us to measure the altitude. The poor performance of the sensor readings, however, suggested that a barometer alone is not sufficient for controlling the altitude of your drone. Fortunately, your quadcopter hovers not only when the altitude stays the same, but also when the vertical velocity is equal to zero. Measuring this vertical velocity is surprisingly easy using your MPU 6050 accelerometer. Imagine that there exist three inertial directions X, Y and Z for the acceleration of your quadcopter drone. These are always aligned horizontally and vertically to the surface of the earth and are colored red on the screen. If your accelerometer or drone turns, these red inertial axes keep pointing in the same direction. When your drone pitches, the accelerometer does not measure the acceleration in its inertial axis anymore, but it measures the acceleration along the axes that are defined on the accelerometer itself. These are colored green on the screen. The three green vectors will have a component that can be related back to the acceleration along the inertial z-axis. Using basic trigonometry and the cosine of the pitch angle, you can find the relation between the acceleration in the inertial z-axis in red and the accelerometer z-axis in green. Let's repeat this trick with the sine of the pitch angle which results in the relation between the acceleration in the inertial z-axis in red and the accelerometer x-axis in green. Doing a second transformation by rolling your drone around the new x-axis with the angle theta roll will allow you to further expand the equations with the roll component. Now you can relate the cosine of the roll angle with the z-axis of the first transformation in green and the new accelerometer z-axis in yellow. Repeat this with the sine of the roll angle that can be related to the z-axis of the first transformation in green and the new accelerometer y-axis in yellow. Now you have three equations that express a component of the acceleration in the inertial z-axis in function of the roll and the pitch angles and the accelerometer x, y and z-axis. By adding these three equations to each other, you are able to calculate the full acceleration in the inertial z-axis. By integrating the acceleration, you are able to get the vertical velocity. Remember that Ts is the time of one iteration, 4 milliseconds in our case, and that k holds the number of iterations in our code. Now let's start coding in the Arduino IDE. First initialize the gyro and accelerometer variables as seen in part 14. Define the acceleration in the inertial z direction and the vertical velocity. Continue with the gyro and accelerometer MPU6050 function and do not forget to write down your own accelerometer calibration values in lines 38 to 40. At the end of the function, calculate the roll and pitch angles. In the setup part, you will start the communication with the MPU6050. Once the communication with the MPU6050 is done, you will call the function in the loop part and calculate the acceleration in the inertial z-axis from the accelerometer values and the roll and pitch angles using the equations that we derived earlier in this part. Remember that the unit of acceleration is g, so in order to convert it to centimeter per square second, you need to subtract the result with 1 and multiply it with 9.81. To take into account the conversion from meter to centimeter, just multiply the result with 100. The vertical velocity is calculated by integrating the acceleration in the inertial z direction. Now print the vertical velocity and enter the loop part by waiting until 4 milliseconds have passed. Connect the TNC with the MPU6050 as seen in part 4, Upload the new code to your TNC and open the serial plotter. You immediately notice that the resulting measurements show a non-zero vertical velocity, even though the sensor lies flat on the table and is not moving. 
When moving the sensor up and down, the measurement responds to the movement, but the overall vertical velocity is not affected. The rate of change of the vertical velocity depends on how well you performed your accelerometer calibration, as this is once again an example of the accumulation of small integration errors. It is clear that this method is not suitable for your control system. In the next video, we will use a second Kalman filter to combine the altitude and vertical velocity measurements. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series and remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full code on GitHub.